Welcome everyone to the last day of the South by Southwest live stream for the UK's Department for International Trade. I'm your host, Jimmy Conrad, and we are here on the floor of the Convention Center in Austin, Texas, to talk about and with British companies and people that are driving innovation in the tech space. And today our focus is women in tech. So I'm happy to be joined by two guests. One is Laura Harrison, who's a senior product manager, and she runs Point on global innovation for the BBC Connected Studio. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And next to me is simply B. Charlotte. She's a singer, writer, and producer from Scotland. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Okay, guys, first and foremost, describe what you do, because I just, that was a mouthful. <laughs> That was a huge mouthful, yeah. and I think it would probably take me all day. <laughs> but um, the short version is that uh, BBC Connected Studio is uh, looking at near-term innovation, so driving innovation across the BBC, but it sort of brings along with it sort of startups in the tech sector. So we've done it across the UK, but also across the world, looking at emerging markets as well, hence the global innovation front. So okay. it's my job to, to drive that. Great. That sounds fun. Yeah. Exciting and, and challenging. Love it. In some ways. Yeah. And then Charlotte, obviously you're uh, changing the world through music, but you also bring digital into the equation. How do you do that? Yeah, definitely. So um, I'm predominantly, yeah, I guess, a songwriter and performer, uh, but I kind of write through digital uh, stuff as well. So I do a lot of digital music, um, which has kind of led me into doing more sort of like tech stuff, I guess. Um, so uh, I've been working with a company called Navelia. And we've been kind of creating different ways to make music a bit more physical and just kind of trying to explore how digital artists can really like come out from behind the screen and just make it maybe more of a performance or a show. Okay, so, so when you're writing, do you write with the digital thing in mind first? Or are you kind of more traditional and thinking about the song and the chords and laying it all down that way? I don't know, it depends. Sometimes, like sometimes it might start with guitar or a vocal and then sometimes it might start with a beat or a, a synth type part. I kinda, it just depends for me really. I kind of, I like the element of not really knowing what it might start with and where it can go. Sometimes you might have an idea of like, oh, I want it to be about this and I want it to kind of sound roughly like this, but I think there's something kind of like quite exciting about letting it do its own thing. What like, sort of instruments do you use? Um, I use uh, mostly like guitar, keys, uh, a lot of like drum type, pad type stuff, uh, kind of just try to yeah, figure out like, learn how to play some different instruments as well. Okay, now before we jump into that, because I do want to explore both of those things, how did you get your start? Like, when did you know that this is the direction I want to go, I want to get in tech, which for better or for worse is, feels pretty male dominated. Yeah, very. When did you like, I'm going to raise my hand, I'm going for it, I'm going to be a flag bearer yeah. for all women out there. Um, it wasn't quite like that for me, it was more sort of quite fluid, so I did quite a lot of work uh, in sort of uh, production spaces and project management. And I ended up uh, working for a company that uh, ran sort of the UK's version of TED, uh, a conference called Thinking Digital, uh, where I was thrown into a space where it was just all inspiring people talking very passionately about the things that they do within the tech sector. And from there, that's when I was like, OK, I really enjoy working in this area. I'm really inspired myself by all the people and all the things that there is going on. So what can I do next? And an opportunity came up within um, the BBC R&D, where they were starting this pilot program specifically to look at Connected Studio and look at driving those near-term innovations through to looking at the audience need all the way through to you know giving something back to the audience that they can really enjoy and experiment in. Uh, and I've been there for ever since. That's exciting. Now to give some context, I asked that a little bit passionately because I have two young daughters at home who are in a computer science class or in a coding class in New York City, but they're the only female and all boys. Yeah. And they're like, why is that, Daddy? And so it's kind of hard to always explain why that is. Sure. So I don't know if you run up against some of that as well, where you know, you're, you're, you're around a lot, of, a lot of boys and you're like, hey, listen, I'm in charge. I guess I'm so, Charlotte. Yeah. I think <laughs> similar to Laura, like, I didn't think about it like at the start and think, like, I'm getting into this because I want to prove a point or I, I think this is a a big issue because I didn't really know I guess at the start like when I started like performing and doing open mics I, I was also like the youngest person there so that was also an element to me it wasn't really about like male or female it was kind of just more about like everyone knew I was the youngest person there so that was kind of more of an issue uh, but then when I kind of got over that and I think just as time and as I've like kind of grown myself and learned more about myself I've kind of realized that yeah, there is sometimes times where it is difficult and that, like, I think that it's okay to not hide that sometimes. Uh, that, like, it's okay to say that maybe 
it's a little bit difficult. But I think, to be honest, like if sometimes if you spend a lot of time, like if you go on a tour and it was just all a group of a group of girls or whatever, that would still be difficult. I think at yeah. times with personalities and stuff. So I think, yeah, it, it can be an issue, and definitely in certain environments, like maybe a studio, for example, if like people might not take me seriously with my ideas because I'm maybe young and female or whatever. But I think. I used to kind of get frustrated by it, but now I just use it as a positive to kind of drive me on to, to keep doing and just to, I don't need to make a big song and dance about yeah. it or whatever, I just need to go and do my thing and people will know what I'm up to. Well, I think you brought up a good point where in your time and your growth to where you've gotten, it was less about male or female and more about, I just want to be surrounded by people that think like yeah. I do and are passionate like yeah. I am about this tech space, obviously it inspired you to do more. Yeah, do you feel that here at South By? that they're, they're, you're in this space where everybody just wants to talk to each other and how can we help in uh, a spirit of collaboration, yeah, male or female? Absolutely, I do think that's what happens at these types of events and these conferences and festivals is that you do get a really broad mix of people coming just to like see what's going on. It isn't just dominated by one, you know, one person or one type yeah. of person. Um, but that doesn't necessarily then feed back into your everyday life. So, I mean, just the other week I was doing a presentation to CEOs, CTOs, CTOs of you know global companies, and I was one of four women in a room of 75 wow. people, and it was a real struggle. It was. It sort of gives you a bit of a wake-up call because I'm quite, I'm quite happy to be in an environment at the BBC where it's it's not quite as harsh as that. It's not in your face as much. Uh, to then just be sort of thrown back out of that and being in a room full of suits, right, uh, right. certainly. Did you, you find that as a, like a intimidating or just more disappointing? Both. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It made me sort of want to you know, get quite fired up about right, it. Right. What, what's going on? What do I need to do? What more can we do uh, right. to make this sort of uh, the gap you know, smaller? And then when you walk into a room, sometimes you know what your audience, they want you to succeed, right? You can feel their energy and they want it. I, I don't yeah. know if you feel the same way when you walk into a room like that. But, I mean, they might just want to be listening and if yeah. the respect that you have intelligence every, and you can speak expertly exactly. on that. But. I think every room is different. Right, um, right. And the way you approach it will be very different depending on the feedback. You know, I'm sure as a musician, you know, you can... Sense your audience. Exactly. And you end up performing or talking very differently depending yeah. on that vibe that you get. We could argue that talking is performing in some yeah, capacity, true. right? Especially in a room <laughs> full of people you're like, ah, I'm a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Now, how do you handle a room that might be walk in you're like ah this audience is a little testy <laughs> how, how do you win them over i don't know i think like it's bit, for me like especially at a place like south by for example you never actually know what the audience is going to be like so it could be like five people it could be loads of people so i think when you're at something like this and at any gig you just always have to go and do the show that you would do anywhere and if people like it then they like it and if they don't then i think that's fine but i think if you go out and you know that you can give your best performance then you will hopefully win people over and stuff. Yeah. I think uh, one of the shows we had the other night kind of went out and it was a, a nice crowd, but it just kind of it took a little bit of time to maybe get into it. I think um, but it's cool. It's like it's, it's a nice feeling when you can go out and then you know that people are with you. Uh, okay, so really quickly, this is probably just for my daughters. What any advice that you give to them towards just staying the course, don't get discouraged. Exactly. Uh, you know, any of that would be. Exactly that. What would you Just, say to the younger generation? I think um, be confident in what you do. Don't be sort of derailed by things that happen around you. I think just just be strong and, and keep stay passionate about the things that you love. Don't be put off just because you're the only girl in the room. No, I definitely agree with that. I think as well, like, unfortunately, this, this might be a thing that is around for a long time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It might, it might not, never change. And I really would like it to, but it might not. So I think that, like, if you know that, that you know that it's okay to be in that environment and nobody like, is judging you, it's, it's what you yeah. want to do. I think like no matter your gender, you're allowed to do what you feel like you want to do. Girls, are you watching at home? Yeah. Right, these are good notes, write these down. All right, so now you're here at South By, you're head of global innovation, you're surrounded by it. Anything here that excites you, that, that's motivated you to be like, that's a good idea? Yeah, I mean, you get kind of complacent when you're in uh, sort of deep into innovation, but sort of taking a step back and being, and being at something like South By, you, you sort of see around and you see some of the startups and you, you do get excited. I was at um, the Wow Factory uh, just yesterday and they've got some amazing stuff going on. They've got sort of um, tabletop uh, projections which can understand sort of 
the depth of where you are, so the surface of a table becomes everything that you want to do, a computer, a screen, or whatever it might be. It's yeah, incredible. they had yeah. some. Yeah, they had some great yeah. stuff going on there. Yeah, and then you show it. Is there something that you see here? It could be tech, it could be yeah. music, or just somebody walking by that's got some unique personality. Like, mm. I like what they're about, and, and yeah. it inspires you to think about something in a different way. I think so. Yeah, like for, for me, just Austin as a place, I find it quite inspiring, like really inspiring. And the first time I came here uh, a few years ago, um, I I wrote a song when I got back that kind of. I, I wanted to kind of sum up how I felt about Austin and kind of just the whole the vibe of the place and, and that kind of turned into the first song that we released as Be Charlotte and it was just kind of about looking at things from a different perspective and it was kind of like my first proper time away like for a long period of time uh, and it just really made me, I don't know, realise a little bit more about myself I guess but yeah I think I, I find it such an inspiring place just that there's so many people here who want to be here and just like be themselves, I guess. Yeah. Kind of no, it is exciting. It. There's, a, there's a great vibe here. <laughs> now, how important is it to have a UK influence out South by? And Laura, I'll, take, I'll let you go first on this one. Um, I think if you're working on a global scale, I think the UK is, is quite important to that. I mean, there's many innovations that come from the UK. I would say BBC is quite a big one. <laughs> as um, you should, as you should. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I think it's. It's definitely important to be able to make sure we get that sort of two-way participation in, like from my perspective, working at Connect Studio, it's all about looking at you know, those niche parts of the market that we might not be already looking at within BBC R&D. So how do we work with them? How do we collaborate and create this community? Uh, and I think the community element of innovation is the only way it's going to sort of work because the more people you get together, the sort of more you can scale and the more you can sort of build whatever it is that you're creating and that goes for music as well. And you seem to be doing a lot of collaboration with the digital side. I mean, who do you yeah. tap on the shoulder to say, hey listen, I've got this great song, I think in the physical space it could work with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to almost share your ideas and your music in that way? Yeah, I think it's good. I think if, like, I guess maybe like, you meet someone or talk to someone that you feel like can maybe understand what you're talking about and it's a good time to kind of speak about that stuff um, as well. And like what Laura was saying about like, the UK influence, I think music especially, like, there's a lot of bands from Scotland here this year that are showcasing. I think that's such a good thing. Like to be an artist from Scotland to know that you can come and do something like this is just yeah. like, really incredible. Like, maybe maybe like, a few years ago I wouldn't have really known that that was possible, but I think each year there's maybe more and more bands coming from Scotland and I think the UK like as a full as well. So I think it's a really it's a yeah. positive thing. And I think South by gives you a platform to be able to do that regardless of what nationality you are. Like having a UK base at South by. Um, you can see all around the trade fair where we are. There's all like Ontario got a place, yeah. you know, Brazil's got a place over there. It's sort of as South by, you have that platform and you're able to do more connections and more work just by just by being here as the UK. Do you feel like the UK companies work together in some ways, or you see each other walking by at South by like, hey, what's up? You know, uh, we're, <laughs> we're in this together. We're trying to carry the torch here. And, get more reach in a big market here in the United States. Yeah, definitely. I think so. And I think, I mean, the tech sector is its quite small anyway. Um, you might think it's pretty big, but just by walking around Austin, I think there's about 70,000 people or something that come to South by Southwest. And I think I've bumped into about 20 people that, <laughs> that I've known from events that we may have uh, worked on before um, from different companies across the UK. So it's really refreshing to see that they have an opportunity to do some work here as well. So, yeah. And then Charlotte, is there any tech that's involved in your live shows? Do you bring any of that into the equation? Yeah, um, yeah so in the live setup, we have, um, there's three of us. Uh, so James, he plays keys and bass, uh, MIDI keys. Uh, Dave's the drummer and I have a sort of like Ableton session running and um, so that's kind of what I was doing a panel yesterday called Making Music Physical Again uh, with Novelia and that was kind of talking about that aspect of it so like creating different stuff so we demoed um, a cardboard MIDI keyboard uh, for the first time which is pretty cool so um, we're kind of hoping to bring that into the live show eventually um, it's kind of something that we did the first time I spoke to South by a few years ago but kind of just it wasn't um, reliable enough yet, I guess, for a, a live performance. There's too many elements of risk, I think. But since then, kind of really worked on narrowing down the main areas of what it needs to do. Um, so in, in the live shows now, I use a, a launch pad, which is just like loads of different buttons to, to kind of trigger some stuff. Um, but we're going to 
hope to make a cardboard version, so that's what we demoed yesterday. But yeah, I'd like to exciting, bring yeah. that all into the show. I think it's so important to think about like it as a the show as a whole as, as a performance and kind of just yeah incorporate different things in that nobody else is really doing. When's your next show? I, I want to go. Uh, it is on Friday okay. at Esther Follies. I'm gonna write that down. We'll talk. <laughs> we'll talk after. All right, Laura. So. You're here at South By, you're representing BBC Connected Studio. What are you guys doing in particular at this event? And sure. what's the future look like for BBC Connected Studio? So, mainly we've been here to do a few things, be inspired, like we've been talking about already, to really also talk about you know, what is BBC R&D, because quite a lot of people don't realize that we have an R&D department, so really um, pushing out what we're doing. So we held, a, we held a workshop in Great Britain House the other night um, around uh, creating chatbots. Chatbots is a big theme of the, of the festival this year, uh, I've noticed, but just really understanding, you know, how you how you converse with robots, because that's definitely going to be the future, and people are already doing it without realizing. So we held a, a bit of a workshop just on sort of the thinking, the design thinking around, you know, the user flow and how it changes. If you are having a conversation as we are now versus if one of you suddenly pretends you're a robot, how does that conversation change? Yeah. So we did a bit of work on that, uh, which went down well. Uh, and really just um, just being here and, and, and talking through and meeting new people. And Is this an event that allows you to do some trial and error? Do you feel, as you mentioned earlier, some of the freedom to be yourself, the freedom to try things? And it's accepted because we're all trying things. We're all looking for investment. Mm -hmm. We're all hoping that something that we do and make and create sticks with the, the general public. Do you feel that sense here? I think so, yeah. I think there's enough space and enough time during the different like types of weeks with interactive, the music and the film and the gaming and stuff. I think there's enough space for people to kind of yeah, do their own thing but also cross over into different things so maybe like meet different people from different areas, which I think is amazing to come I mean, somewhere like this and just be able to meet so many different people. So I think, yeah. It's... Does the UK have a, an event like this that's comparable? Not really, no. Not on this size and scope. Um, probably more sort of specific themes versus yeah. one which covers everything. Um, you know, big music festivals like Glastonbury. Right, of course. Um, you know, they'd have they have TED, but um, of course that's an American uh, right. conference. Um, so yeah, they have sort of niche ones, but yeah. not not an overall one. Okay, and then just talk about your music moving forward, the future, yep. and. and do you plan to evolve? And I think that's really the tricky thing with musicians, sticking with what you started with, but then also trying to be true to yourself. Of course, your audience wants to hear what they loved in the first place and trying yeah. to find that balance. I think I think it's important to evolve. Like, I, I think I've never really over like, been overthinking it, if you know what I mean, but I think I've kind of just done it naturally. So like starting writing just like, on acoustic guitar to now kind of doing stuff predominantly digital and like production stuff. So I think it kind of has evolved naturally, but it's something that inside that I knew I wanted to create something different, and I think it's kind of slowly getting there, which is cool. Like to kind of feel, I guess, like on a stage, I feel comfortable and confident enough in my own words and in my own songs. It kind of took a long time to do that, and I think just yeah, it's just through practice, I guess, and keeping keeping myself like on on top, or top form. Your own research and development, yeah, right? No, definitely. That's essentially what it is. Now, Laura. What is next for BBC Connected Studio? I guess I asked that a little bit earlier, but we're speaking more South by Southwest. What's the next step once you leave this event? Because I feel like when you get here, there's so much energy and you're absorbing so much. And then you get home, you're like, oh man, I got like 5,000 emails to answer <laughs> and I got real life stuff that's yeah. calling on me. How do you kind of uh, harness this energy and keep it so that it can inform what you're doing? Sure. Forward? I guess just making sure that you of the, the connections that you've already made here, that you follow up with them and see, you know, if I'm really inspired by something and I want to take it forward, I, that's that's the chance to do that and maybe bring it in and, and work on those collaborations that I was talking about earlier so that we can maybe experiment with something. So some of the things we're looking at currently are around VR. We've been doing quite a lot of work in that area for the last couple of years. Uh, but really, as we, as it becomes more sort of hate the term, but business as usual, you know, 360 video is becoming more sort of mainstream. How do we make it more sort of engaging, more interactive? And there's a lot of companies around, you know, there's a huge VR strand here uh, at South By that we can tap into and talk to people and really make those connections carry on versus just, okay, that's it, it's done, see you next year sort of thing. Right, okay. And then Charlotte, 
you see all the VR stuff, all the technology, they yeah. can maybe help do a music video in some way. Do you, do, you, do you see content stories in your mind when you're seeing all these people wearing their things and I how it could so. maybe like really provide an experience that you wouldn't be able to give any other fans? Yeah, no, definitely. I think so. I think like, it's cool to just see so much new things going on, I guess. And for me, like, I kind of like to, if I have a thought about something that I kind of want to do once I get home, then I kind of like write it down or, or somewhere just to like make a note of it so that I don't forget about it. Yeah, I think it is just so important to follow up. I think if you just you're here and it's so exciting and then you go home and it's like oh that was fun, but you don't actually do anything about it. Yeah, I think that funny. is probably the most important part about the event. To be honest, like, and this part is fun and it's good, but I think afterwards is the part when actual stuff happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So. Just for everybody at home, is our last stream. What's the what's the best thing that you've seen since you've been here? Um, I saw the talk uh, from Dr. Shiguru, who created a robot in his own image uh, last year, and he was here with another robot, and they had a conversation between each other. The two robots did live on stage. Wow! And that was really amazing to see. And then when I went to the Japan factory. Uh, the Wow Factory, the Japan house. I did that one as well. The, yeah, the, the robots, robots were there. Yeah, they were talking to me about Lady Gaga and nice. <laughs> Katy Perry or Taylor Swift. Yeah. Because it's one thing, like we were talking about chatbots before, it's one thing to, as a human, to have a conversation with a robot. That's one thing. I think we've sort of passed that. But for two robots to interact with each other without yeah. a human having to be there that's about this topic, that's. So if I had to guess the future for Charlotte. 25 years from now, it's going to be a robot of her I'm and a robot of her. I'm just a robot, <laughs> yeah. You're just hanging out by yourself. Uh, what's what's the most interesting thing you've seen? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think just, like, for me, I, I saw this the last year as well, but when it kind of, when you notice the change of, like, from interactive into music, I think it's pretty cool. Like, I think this year it's been a bit more um, overlap, which has been a bit nicer, I think. But, uh, yeah, I think for me, it's just, I just find it so fascinating just to see all different people here and just kind of yeah what everyone's up to yeah cool well we're about done with our time you guys want to explain what what bbc connect the studio where people can find you and what and what you guys are doing sure i mean we're on the web as uh, everyone is so bbc.co.uk slash connect the studio uh, like I say, Connected Studio is the part that works with uh, the community to build cool experiments. And then we have wait, BBC. Wait, 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 wait. Like what kind of experiments? Well, things in the VR space. Okay. So we've created... Can Americans apply for this? Because I have yeah, some ideas. It's yeah. global. Okay. We worked right. with some, uh, some <laughs> okay. companies okay. in Kenya, for example. All right, cool. That was interesting because uh, instead of the, the emerging markets, tech's obviously on the rise, but it's mobile tech versus you know millions of devices that you've got. So it happens that there were more female developers coming to the sessions that we ran in Kenya than there would be at home because they've all sort of come for this level playing field of everyone's uh, building for this mobile technology versus having this sort of tradition of having lots of men dominate computer um, uh, and IT software systems all the way up. Uh, and then suddenly we're trying to just sort of look at a diverse workforce. So Do you feel like you, there's an emphasis on finding females? Uh, the BBC's made it uh, a clear, uh, clearly high on the agenda this year. They're aiming to get, um, I think, 50% female across the board by 2020. I think they're close to it. I think they're 48% at the minute. Uh, there's still a long way to go on the digital side, though. I think um, only a couple of years ago in research and development, uh, I think it was like 12% were female. Wow. I think they've increased that to 23 over the last two years, so it's growing yeah. and they're putting more emphasis on That's a good rate it. after yeah. like two years. Yeah. So it's growing, but it'll take time. And then Charlotte, where can people find you? Um, find me on all the normal social networks. I guess like Facebook and Twitter, it's just the same uh, handle, it's just I am the Charlotte. This is just to find you. Where can we buy your stuff? Yeah. That's a, yeah. Buy your stuff. You're um, on Spotify. Spotify, yeah, I guess, streaming, um, yeah, iTunes, places like that. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. Thank it was you a real me. pleasure to talk to you guys. For everybody watching at home, thank you so much for watching our stream. And on behalf of all the great guys that are working behind the scenes that are making me look better than I deserve to be, and on behalf of the UK's Department for International Trade, I'm your host, Jimmy Conrad, and I thank you for watching. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks.